kids, they don't learn from people they don't like. If they don't like you, if they don't want to be around you, they're really not going to learn or want to learn. They're actually not going to care about being in your classroom. School, good humor. They say I'm out of my mind, standing on the outside. But it's cooler, it's fresher. I like me here. Hey, loveys, welcome back to my channel. And if you are new, hello, my name is Stephanie. And if you check the title of the video, then you know that this video is going to be focused on classroom management tips. So a little bit about myself. I am a teacher down here in Miami, Florida. I teach students that are in low income areas. So I teach at a Title I charter school. So. Classroom management is definitely like a huge deal when you are coming into our work field. So as educators, we definitely need to understand the concept of classroom management. We also need to know how to apply it to our daily lives as teachers in the classroom because if there isn't any classroom management then it's really 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 hard to execute those lessons that you've been planning all weekend or executing lessons that you have been learning throughout the summer or through different pds but if you don't have classroom management and you can't control the kids or the kids are being very disruptive then guess what it's gonna be hella hard for you to execute those lesson plans so i'm bringing you seven tips to help you with classroom management all these classroom management tips that i'm about to tell you guys are things that i have done in my classroom that i saw have worked tip number one the first tip i can definitely assure will be a good one is to introduce the word integrity so integrity if you're an adult you may know what integrity is but if you don't that's okay integrity means doing the right thing when no one is watching this then gives the student a sense of responsibility responsibility like i know that this is something that i can control because i control what i'm doing so if I'm doing the right thing, I'm showing integrity, I'm meeting that expectation. I And when I tell you I introduce it everywhere and I make sure that it, it's in our classroom vocabulary, like it's on my word wall first week of school, like I gotta introduce it. It's in morning meetings during the first week of school and whenever we lose sight of doing the right thing when Miss Seed is not around, I'm going to implement them in morning meetings throughout the year. And I'm telling you, I'm always talking about integrity. And over time, I kid you not, like around October, November, if you do this, notice how your students will then start to tell their peers, hey, make sure you're showing integrity. Literally, like you can literally hear, whisp you can hear them whispering like, make sure you're showing integrity. Like the, the students that want to do good are always like, you know, the ones that are on, on top of their A game when it comes to behavior and things like that. And they're telling the other students like, hey, make sure you're showing integrity. Make sure you're showing integrity. And it really just starts to create a culture of, I do this because I care about my class. I do this because I care about myself. I do this because my teacher told me it's important from the beginning of the school year. And I know that it's something throughout the whole year that I'm going to constantly hold them up to. That's a standard, that's a requirement, that's an expectation. I'm going to always hold all my students to no matter what. And you can even do this in the younger grades starting as low as kindergarten. Tip number two. Uh, during the school year when you are introducing rules, expectations, procedures, and things like that, you also want to introduce clear definitions and expectations of what is a reward and what is a consequence. So a lot of teachers don't really talk about like what is a reward or what is a consequence. They usually just say, I'm going to give you a reward or here are these consequences if you do X, Y, and Z. But they never really tell the students what a reward is and what a consequence is. So my definitions for reward, I'll start off with reward, is when you are doing the right thing, and you are constantly doing the right thing, not because you want something, but because you know that it's the right thing to do, people like that get rewarded in life. 
when I'm introducing reward, I tell them that I don't give you a reward because I have to. I do it because you earned it. And sometimes you do give it to them just because they want the reward because, hey, at least they're doing it. But you definitely want to put them into that mindset that I want to do my work because I, it's the right thing to do. I'm a student. This is my job. This is what I'm supposed to do. Right. And then for consequence, I shape consequence. Like when you make a bad choice or when not a mistake, not a mistake. When you make a bad choice, all in all, that's that second one is make sure that you explain what a good, like what a reward is and what a consequence is to you in your classroom and what does that look like in your classroom because this is their classroom as well so they need to know because it'd be unfair if you just kept giving them consequences and it wasn't clear from the beginning what was okay and what was not okay all right number three the third one is kind of like a tip slash hack like something that i like to do in my classroom sometimes so when i see like my students are getting really rowdy or they're just like kind of like not uncontrollable but they're like a little live like you know they're kind of live they're like yeah uh, you know like no uh let's get back to work so i always then um take out an equity stick or you know my magic cup and i take a name out and i say I have someone's name in my hand. If they are doing the right thing, which whatever I ask them to do, so say for instance, it's they're doing independent work for 15 minutes um, or they're doing independent work, finishing up their math or whatever they're supposed to be doing or paying attention on the carpet. If they're a little like fidgety on the carpet, I'll tell them like, hey, so I picked, so I have a name in my hand. You guys don't know who it is. So. If this person is doing what they're supposed to be doing, I'm gonna go ahead and give the whole class a dojo point. Every time I look to check to see if that person is doing the right thing, I'm gonna give the whole class a dojo point if they're doing the right thing. After, I'll let you guys know who it was. Are you guys, you guys ready for the challenge? And throughout the lesson, I'm literally checking on that student. So this is called like mystery man, or you can do like a table or groups. If your kids don't come to the carpet, you can do tables and stuff like that. And um, I basically look throughout that lesson or throughout whatever I'm telling them to do. And I'll just randomly, like literally I'm writing on the board and I'm ding, you know like putting class dojo points on and they get so excited because they're like oh my gosh who is it like is she talking to me is, is she looking at me is she looking at me is she looking at me is she you know but they're like well let me be focused because I don't want to be the one that you know is not doing the right thing and everybody else is talking you know or I'm not doing the right thing and nobody else is and everybody else is doing the right thing and then we all lose a dojo point because i'm the person um this really worked with my group this year it was kind of like a classroom management game um just so that i can see if students would be paying attention and things like that and i send some shine to like that whole like the whole class just so that they really don't know who it is. And then I usually tell them at the end and they're like really surprised and excited about it. And when I say the end, not like the end of the day, but I tell them like the end of that lesson or when we're going back to our seats and I wanna do something else when it comes to classroom management, just so that they don't get bored uh, cause they will get bored very quickly and or they will stop caring very quickly. <laughs> so yeah, so that's a really good classroom management game for your students. Number four is whole brain teaching. So whole brain teaching is something that I found on YouTube. Um, actually my first year teaching, my uh, lead teacher, she actually did a lot of whole brain teaching with our students. Um, and I took a lot of those things from her. And then I've just tried to build my own like portfolio of what whole brain teaching practices I use. So there are a few of them that I do use. I use the rules, the attention grabbers, I do the mirrors out, 
um, mirrors and words. I do turning talks like class teach, okay, um, and things like that. These are really great for classroom management or management tips for the lesson. So when you're actually in your lesson, um, they have really good um, practices for you to use to keep your students engaged from grades like K all the way to like maybe ninth, 10th, 11th grade, I think I saw. So when I say um the lesson, like so before my lesson, I always do mirrors out. So it's like mirrors out and then all my students, they put their mirror out and I say today in math and they repeat after me, I will be able to, and we say whatever that objective is for the day. Um, when you do mirrors out, it really kind of holds the students accountable to understanding what the objective is. They've said it, it's come out of their mouth. They've heard it, they repeat it to a partner. I usually make them repeat it to a partner, like, you know, like teach, go ahead and teach your neighbor. Well, turn and talk to your neighbor and let them know what our objective is for today. Class teach, and they say, okay. And then they turn to their neighbors, they talk about it. And I do an attention grabber like class city, class city, and they turn back yes city, yes city, and they have to be sitting down, you know, like in slant, facing forward and things like that. So that is a really good classroom management. It keeps the kids like engaged and active it's just great for all types of learners but I really love whole brain teaching and I want to do more because I'm going to be teaching older grades especially with writing like they have you know the writing uh, chants and different movements that goes with like them pausing and it goes and like you know it's just like really cool really active really engaged and i love stuff like that i love my students to be engaged during the lessons i will link it down below so that you can check out my top three uh videos that can you know introduce you to whole brain teaching if you haven't heard about it ever <laughs> number five so after your student so this is kind of like an after effect um, to prevent further behavior from a student that is really having a tough time. So after a student has had a really bad behavior day, so I'm going to give you an example. I have a student, JJ, right? I'll say JJ. JJ doesn't want to go sit down. I say, JJ, go sit down, honey. JJ looks at me and doesn't go sit down. I say, JJ, I've asked you to go sit down. Please don't make me have to ask you again. Because if I have to ask you again, I'm going to take a dojo point. JJ is still talking to his friends. So, <laughs> then, JJ hears the doom that I took a dojo point away. JJ then proceeds to throw a fit. Why did you take my dojo away? And walking around your classroom and hitting things off the tables and you are just like, really? Are you really asking why I took your dojo point away? And they're just upset. You're like, I'm, I'm confused as to why you're confused because I clearly told you if you didn't go sit down, I was going to take the dojo point away. Please go ahead and sit down so you can show me that you're trying to fix what you're doing right now and then we can talk about it later. JJ don't wanna do that. <laughs> so JJ decides he's going to pick up a chair and throw it across the classroom. JJ. So, you know you lost recess, right? Because you can't throw things across the classroom. Um, or you can say, JJ, let's go outside. All this, you know, whatever you do to get your students to calm down. After the student, hopefully you have administrative support that will Take that student out, whether it's for a breather, whether it's for the day, but you have support at your school and they take that student away. The moment that student comes back, whether it's an hour after, 
a day after, a week after. When that student comes back, you have to show them that that behavior did not define or change how you feel or care about that student. You have to tell them, you have to be like, hey, what's going on? How are you? We feeling better today? All right, because you know I really miss you and X, Y, and Z. And if they want to talk about it, if they want to say, I'm really sorry and just I'm like, I really appreciate it because I was a little disappointed in the way that you were behaving. But I'm so happy that you decided to apologize and let's go ahead and move forward X, Y, and Z, whatever the case is. This student is going to start to build a trust and a love for you that they never thought that they could have. Um, let me tell you. Um, because when they see that you are not holding a grudge over their behavior or you are not holding them, not responsible, but you're not holding that over their heads like you're a bad kid, you're a bad seed, you did bad. Um, when you do those things, the student builds a trust for you like I'm telling you, it's unmatched. And those types of behaviors, they may happen, because they will happen. But it it's the process of them trying to be better at controlling that anger. Your student is going to respect you and love you so much more beyond that. And it, it'll really reduce like the behavior management to where like they really just get upset when they're like, just upset as opposed to you didn't do something they didn't like and they want to whine about it cry about it yell and then escalate to something way bigger like throwing a chair across a classroom tip number six so this is gonna be kind of crazy you gotta be about this life if, if you're gonna do tip number six <laughs> tip number six do something fun spontaneously like just Literally, they're in the middle of work. They're doing whatever, and you say class, class, and say yes, yes. Like, go ahead and put your pencils down, and let's go ahead, put your pencils down in five, four, three, two, one, zero. Track me, track you. They're looking at you. Then you're like, let's go ahead and line up. What? And you're like, one, stand up. Two, push your chairs. This table, this table, this table, this blah blah. blah. We all line up, and we just go outside for like five minutes or 10 minutes, whatever the case is. Like while their work is still down, they're still doing whatever. Doing this spontaneity for them, it makes you seem like such like a cool, fun, exciting teacher and they wanna be around you more. And kids, they don't learn from people they don't like. If they don't like you, if they don't want to be around you, they're really not going to learn or want to learn. They're actually not going to care about being in your classroom. They're going to always see the work as tedious. They're going to see coming to school as dreadful because they have a teacher that is not cool. They have a teacher that doesn't understand them. They have a teacher that they can't relate to, that can't relate to them. So behavior problems will arise. To prevent those things, show your students that you're fun and you're human too. You want a break too, don't you? So, this is really fun for them. You have to do this first time though, in the beginning of the year. I would say like the second week of school, third week of school, just to see how they move. Because when they come back, you definitely have to set a clear expectation of my students this year couldn't handle that. So I probably only did it once or twice um, this year, but my students in Jacksonville, I was able to do that with because like they were able to come back, calm down, decompress, and then get right back to work. When we get back into this classroom, I want us to, we're gonna take a five minute rest and I wanna see if we can all get right back to work. Go from silly, to serious so i always tell my students that like when they go from the silly to serious so like i've given them that expectation i've given them clear directions on what they should be doing x y and z and they do it oh baby 
my students get all the dojo points in the world and i will tell you about that in my last one but my students get all the dojo points in the world my students get extra recess time like i really praise them for doing that because it is hard for kids to go have fun and then come back and get back to work it's hard it's hard but they can do it and when they show you they can do it and you can trust them then by all means i mean do it like i would say four times out of the year don't don't get crazy with it don't do it once a week because then they're gonna expect once a week we doing this if you can't hold that up for on your end don't do it i couldn't hold that up on my end i didn't do it but i did it once every like quarter or something and my students really love that that built relationships with my students because they would you know be outside and want to show me dances and steps and you know all these new moves or songs that they are doing or flips and tricks you know just like bonding with your students and i was just able to do that uh with them in that time in that space um you can even do something as, as small as a go noodle and then have them go back to their seats just one go noodle and have them go back to the seat so this is different from a brain break this is literally in the middle of their work like brain breaks you kind of like plan them out like oh after we do this then we can go ahead and do that no like do it in the middle of the lesson see how they control themselves and when they are when they can control themselves oh my gosh like it's so beautiful and cool to see now tip number seven is try your hardest to incentivize daily when i say incentivize daily i mean your incentives like usually people have like oh every friday we go into the treasure box or i try to incentivize every single day every day was a day for you for an opportunity for you to go into the treasure box so i have a treasure box in my classroom filled with candies pencils erasers pens notebooks toys all the stuff that kids love right and um and i tell them you have to meet a certain type a certain number of dojo points in order to get into the treasure box so monday we would start off with 15 points the next day i'd expect you to get 20 or tw like 25 or 30 or and then the day after that i would expect you to get 40 for you to get into the treasure box and it would just grow from there and of course the students uh, dojo points are growing because every day they get more and more dojo points and it's really exciting to see how they internalize that i have a chance every day to go into the treasure box so it's not missy that's like holding out on me like i'm she's giving me the good stuff but i know that i have to be working hard throughout the day all day you definitely want to try to incentivize daily just to keep your students accountable throughout the day if you see that your weekly incentive isn't really working for your classroom when you do daily incentives like i said it gives a student a chance every single day to come and work their butts off in your classroom and to show that i can focus i can be on task i can be a good scholar i can be a good friend i can be a good student and um and i know and i know that i've earned my reward at the end of the day so i love doing that for my students in my classroom it's something that uh started with my lead teacher when i was a first year and when i was a co-teacher and i've just always kept it because it's a really smart idea <laughs> it's a really smart idea especially when dealing with uh classroom management things so yeah so this video was super d duper long but i really hope that it was insightful i hope that you learned a few tips that you maybe have never heard of or never thought to try in your classroom and let me know if you're gonna try them this upcoming school year thank you so so much for watching don't forget to like share comment and subscribe if you haven't already i will be trying to do i'm trying to see if i should do like more teacher content videos i want to see how you guys are liking them and 
yeah so subscribe if you like teacher content and also subscribe if you like makeup hair because i love doing makeup and hair and all that good stuff as well so until next time bye you guys